What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for tuning in on today's video. Uh, if you guys are paying attention to the thumbnail, you know what this video is all about. Um, this intro was us kind of tearing apart the truck so that we could get to the point where we are uh, getting into the install for today and the product of the day. So um, we are working on the dually sled pulling rig here um, and we are doing some air modifications to hopefully cram as much air as possible into the engine of this truck. As you know, in sled pulling, you are limited by your turbo, um, whether that is billet wheel or non-billet wheel, um, size of the inlet of the turbo in your 2.6 and 3.0 classes. Uh, for the most part, we're trying to stay in the stock class, as stock as possible. And so we're trying to get every little advantages that we possibly can. And this modification right here uh, is a big one. Now, to get tore down to where we are currently at, um, you guys are going to want to go back and watch some of my previous videos. I have tons of videos out there where I show uh, how to get down to the intake manifold and pull the intake manifold off. Um, we got to cheat a little bit on this truck. I'm going to flip over the camera and show you guys, but um, we had this off in probably about an hour, um, and we are pretty much ready to go back together with the truck at this point. So let's show you guys what we got going on under the hood, and then we will go over to the bench, and I will show you guys the product of today's video. So as you can see, we are missing a few components under the hood of the dually here. Um, biggest thing here that made us allow, allow us to cheat is we could leave this guy in here. This is your oil filter housing and oil filter. And normally you would have this standoff and then your fuel filter right here. Well, we have a regulated return fuel system right there. And that has allowed us to eliminate the uh, upper fuel bowl here. So all we have is a 6.4 power stroke oil filter housing uh, to go in its place. And yeah, that made it huge. I mean, just a huge difference as far as time uh, to be able to get the intake manifold off. Um, we didn't have to screw with anything related to this. I did because of my routing. I did have to undo the fuel line uh, for this side. Um, but outside of that, you know, that was just mainly just a routing thing um, that I had done. I kind of routed it through the intake manifold. But Nonetheless, guys, super simple, honestly. Um, obviously, pulling your turbo off is a is a biggie here. Um, and then there are two bolts up here for your fan shroud. Um, as far as wiring harnesses go, your Fickham harness, of course, does have to come off. And then the main engine harness, you kind of flop it up and out of the way. Um, for those of you that still have the long tubular looking thing that goes right here, um, it does make things a little bit more tricky, uh, but for the most part, there's two bolts that hold it uh, to the intake manifold. You take those bolts out and you are good to go. So, um, like I said, we are pretty much ready to go back together with the truck at this point. Check out the LLD one piece up pipes in the back there. Those puppies have seen 1600 degrees of EGTs and are holding together like a champ. So let's walk over to our workbench and show you the product. The link for this product is going to be down in the description. So guys, make sure you guys are heading into the description and checking out the links. Um, I have my Instagram um, as well as my personal website and then also the website that I'm going to recommend you guys purchase this from. Um, this is a big, big time upgrade for any 6.0 Power Stroke owner. If you own a stock truck to a balls to the walls truck, it doesn't matter. This is a huge modification and probably is going to net one of the greatest increases in not only power, um, but you are also going to see significant drops in EGTs. Some guys have even claimed better fuel mileage. So this is a big, big item and I wish I could afford it to do it on all of my trucks, but we picked the sled pull truck right there for this particular modification. Let's go over it. What we have today is an O-Dog's S2R ported intake manifold. And when I mean ported, I mean this sucker outflows the factory intake manifold by 46%. Where else can you guys get 40%, 46%, almost 50% more airflow out of one product? Um, this intake manifold is absolutely beautiful. This was a great, great product that came out. Um, O-Dogs, Diesel, uh, Oliver Matt, he uh, actually began by cutting open the factory intake manifolds and, and porting them, um, but now he's gone to a fully cast uh, design here, so it eliminates all the weld seams that you would normally see on an intake manifold. Um, so these things are, not only do they perform way better than, than the factory one, um, but they look just absolutely killer. You can just see the actual difference um, between our factory and our O-Dogs here. These things can flow some serious air. Like I said, up to 
more than the factory intake manifold. Absolutely insane. Um, another big thing too is there's only a 2% uh, drop or difference between the front and the rear. So you're, you're not going to be starving your rear cylinders of air. The factory is very restrictive. I mean, honestly, when compared to this, this thing is super, super restrictive. Not to mention, uh, with the increased airflow, we are going to see a big drop in EGTs. Um, guys have reported upwards of 200 degree drops in EGTs, which if you've got a hot build and you're making 1400 trying to haul your trailer and you can drop it down to 1200, that is huge. That is big time. Um, along with that, because we're getting more airflow, we're going to get faster spool up <clears throat> on our turbo. We're going to see more boost. Um, along with that, anytime you're increasing airflow and increasing boost and efficiency overall of your air system, you are going to see better fuel economy. Um, so that is another big thing. The efficiency of this thing is going to net you better fuel economy. Some guys have seen one to two miles per gallon increase just by switching out their intake manifold. And that goes to show just truly how restrictive the factory intake manifold really is. Um, last but not least, the S2R here is 100% carb compliant. It does retain the EGR valve. It does retain the EGR. Guys, if you live in California or... If you guys have uh, emissions testing, this is the this is it right here. Um, you can you can increase fuel economy, increase power, and still be completely emissions compliant. So um, big big time thank you to Oliver Matt and O Dogs Diesel Performance for coming out with this product. Um, absolutely phenomenal, and I am so stoked to get it on to our dually. There are a couple of things that we have to transfer over, uh, mainly our uh, intake air temp sensor and then our elbow right here um, that all has to be swapped over egr valve will have to be swapped over um, the ports for our coolant right here and our map sensor they actually come with new so this is going to be your map sensor we'll throw a little bit of sealant on that um, and then this right here is the barb for your coolant so it does come with new ones of those as well. Um, went to more of a standard type uh, thread design versus uh, whatever Ford had going on over here, metric. But nonetheless, um, like I said, there is a link down in the description. I ordered this puppy from KC Turbos and within four days, which they're in Arizona and I'm in Michigan, I had this thing sitting at my door. And yeah, that's 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 freaking awesome. They, they carry these puppies in stock. So link down in the description, guys, head over there and pick yourself up a O-Dogs S2R. All right, so we have everything swapped over and we have our two bungs uh, installed there. We just use some um, thread tape on those and tighten those up nicely. A um, couple extra seals that you guys are going to need uh, if you're going to do this job uh, and you don't have a upper fuel bowl. You're going to need this guy, which is your intake to front cover. Um, that's what seals your intake manifold to the front cover with that port right there. So we're gonna wanna go ahead and throw that in before we put our intake manifold on. Um, this seal here, 3C3Z9J469AA, this little booger right here is for your EGR, um, where it goes up into the intake right here, in that port right there. Um, definitely highly, highly recommend getting a new seal for that. I see way too many of those leaks. So um, this is the OEM seal that you guys are going to want. Um, and then, of course, we've got that other one. Those are both coolant O-rings. So last thing you want to do is get this thing on and have a coolant leak. And then last but not least, we have brand new intake manifold gaskets. So here is the part number for that. Um, they come in a pair. Boom, boom. And so we're going to set those on. Uh, our heads before we stick our intake manifold on. Now, I'm going to go over very detailed how I like to install these bolts. Um, one of the major, major differences between an O-Dogs and your factory intake manifold, um, the, the way that they're able to port these out so much is they are eliminating the standoff that the bolt would go through um, to get down to the head. So these guys actually go inside. So you're going to feed this down through um, and that bolt head is going to sit inside of the intake manifold. Um, and then you're using these to plug the top here. So um, it can be tricky, but I'm going to go over what I like to do. Um, and there's probably better methods out there, but I will show you the method that I have found that works really well. 
Um, last but not least, these very back ones, you're going to use factory intake manifold bolts. Make sure you use a stud one on this back side and just a normal one on that side. Um, being that they're all the way in the back, didn't need to really change anything uh, back there as far as uh, mounting. So um, the stud back here is for our Fickham ground, so we definitely want to make sure we get a stud one in the back there. So let's go ahead and feed this sucker in, and we will go ahead and start getting our bolts in there. All right, so now the first thing that I like to do is make sure that everything is lined up. That's I'm talking the gasket, the manifold, and the head. Um, basically, that way I drop the bolt in, and it's going to go right into its home. Um, you can see I've got my flashlight, and I basically use another hole, and I just shine the light into the hole, and then I can eyeball in there and adjust the gasket, adjust our intake manifold um, until everything is lined up. From there, basically, I'm going to go ahead and start all of our bolts. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a little bit of blue Loctite because we don't need these guys coming loose. And we're going to put a little blue Loctite on these. <clears throat> and then we're just basically, basically all we're going to use, that's a quarter inch. Um, so we're going to take our, our nice snap-on thing here and check this out. Magneto. So we've got a, a snap-on, it's magnet, um, it's magnetized, and so we'll be able to drop this right in, start twisting, and once we get it started, um, then we can pull this back out, and we're going to follow it up with our actual ratchet um, and get it fully secured. So a um, little bit of blue Loctite, and we'll make sure our line, our, everything's lined up here. We'll go ahead and get these installed. All right, so we just went ahead and got all of our bolts in, and then we went ahead and tightened them up. Um, now, I did follow the Ford uh, procedure for tightening these bolts. Um, so the, it's 10 foot-pounds, and you basically start on the passenger side. You'll tighten up the very back one, and then you'll come up to the front, and you'll tighten them all the way towards, towards the back, um, <clears throat> all to 10 foot-pounds. Um, once I have this one side completed at 10 foot-pounds, I go back through and double-check all the bolts because they do seem to loosen up a little bit on the O-Dog setup. Um, and then, once that side's done, then you move to the driver's side, um, and it's reverse of the passenger side. So, um, you will tighten up the very front one on the, pa on the driver's side to 10 foot-pounds, and then you go all the way to the back, and you work your way forward to the first one that you tightened up. And then again go back through, make sure they're all tight again. Um, I always go through them all probably three different times um, just to make sure that none of them got a little bit loose, um, you know, if things kind of settled or moved around. Um, but now, basically, we are on to the step where we get to install our little hex plugs. Um, and as you can see, there's a little O-ring, so we're going to take a little bit of engine oil and lube up our o-ring and then this is an eight millimeter so we'll go ahead and throw one in here what you'll notice is the o-ring kind of disappears into its groove and we just kind of make sure it's nice and tight good to go we got to do a bunch more of these and then uh we can start reassembly all right so we're just about buttoned up here but there is one thing that everybody needs to check after they've got their o-dogs installed before they get their alternator back on and um get the belt routed let's come down here to your idler pulley and spin your idler pulley and just make sure that it's not touching the intake manifold. I have had a few of them, um, whether it's because of machine work on the heads or just extra casting on the O-Dogs. Um, just make sure that this guy spins. 
Um, and if it spins freely and you don't hear it uh, hitting your intake, then you're in the clear. Otherwise, you do. I've had to space them out with a washer, just like an eighth inch uh, washer. Um, doesn't hurt anything, uh, but just gives you that extra little bit of clearance. All right, guys, so I'm interjecting into the video right here uh, because we actually ran into a little bit of a problem on the dually um, once we actually got the O-Dogs installed. Um, and so I want to interject right here because it is related to uh, some clearance issues that we ran into. Um, and I want to hopefully save some guys some time. Um, I don't think a lot of you are going to run into this issue, um, but it's definitely something to be aware of. And so when we initially got the O-Dogs installed, uh, we ran into a coolant leak. And uh, ultimately, the coolant leak led to us having to remove the O-Dogs intake manifold back off the truck. And what we discovered, uh, I'm going to I'm going to put up a few pictures. Essentially, what we discovered was that the O-Dogs intake um, was actually not clearing the oil cooler housing. Um, and when we tightened it down and after a few heat cycles, um, the O-Dogs intake cracked the top of the oil cooler housing and created a coolant leak. And ultimately what that meant was that we had to replace the oil cooler top housing. Um, and then we had to kind of self clearance the O-Dogs intake manifold. So, um, what you can see is that we placed the O-Dogs on a mock-up engine that we had. Um, and then, uh, from there we had to assure that we had clearance between the O-Dogs and our oil cooler top plate. Um, we simply took a die grinder and shaved away at the O-Dogs intake very carefully, very meticulously, a little bit by little bit until we had enough clearance. So you guys, um, when you get the O-Dogs installed, um, make sure that it is sitting flush on the top of the heads um, and make sure that maybe you can grab like a, a baseball card or something, a credit card, and make sure you have a little bit of clearance um, right there between the O-Dogs and the oil cooler top plate um, that way you don't end up with the same issue that I had. Now, the reason that we think I might have had an issue, um, a clearance issue, I actually spoke with Casey Turbos where we got the O-Dogs from. And two weeks prior, um, they actually had another customer with a very similar issue. Um, and what we kind of determined was that, um, one, they ended up getting getting a hold of the cast company uh, that makes these in O-Dogs intake manifolds. Um, and they're going to kind of go through and check their tooling. Um, and what we kind of came up with was that the heads, uh, both of my heads on the dually have been decked. So um, I can't tell you guys how much was taken off the heads, um, but that was definitely a variance that definitely lowers the O-Dogs intake. You know, the O-Dogs, it's a, it's a tight fit in there. Um, and so removing some material off the, t off the heads will bring things even a little bit closer. Um, <clears throat> but make you guys aware of this. Um, please check this out before you uh, tighten this down. Um, and then once it is tightened down, make sure there is plenty of clearance there. And what you will also, what I also noticed was once we had clearance, uh, we did have to space out the uh, one pulley up front, the one idler pulley. Um, it was for sure hitting after we got it um, clearanced out. Um, previously, it was not, it was, it was clearing that, and that's because it was hitting our oil cooler housing. So, um, real quick guys, just please take a look at that um, when you're going back together, uh, especially if you've had your heads uh, machined or decked. So continue on with the video. Well guys, that is going to wrap up today's video. Thank you for tuning in. Um, you guys will have to stay tuned for the next video because we have some comparison videos of the ODOG Stage 2 and the factory intake manifold. That's right, we took some uh, really good recordings of our boost. Um, our EGTs, amongst other things. So um, definitely stay tuned. We're going to do some, some comparisons between the two and the differences that this truck noticed um, just by swapping out the intake manifold. So thank you guys for tuning in. Remember, link down in the description for this product. Stay tuned. We got a lot of action coming. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, drop a comment, and we will see you guys in the next video.